These are behaviors that must be learned and thus taught. Chromosomes have to leave some room to move for this. They have to predispose themselves to select not only the strong, but the good too. We are not the first beings capable of giving our lives for others, nor are we the first or the only ones to associate ourselves with and domesticate other plant or animal species. Though, of course, we do things whole hog. The advantages of cultivating large extensions of land and of grazing uncountable flocks and herds has allowed us to grow enormously. The number of people and the quality of life we enjoy have grown practically everywhere. The different cultures on Earth see their personalities reflected in the way they have tamed their livestock or tilled their fields. And by the same measure, every patch of Earth has etched in its shepherds their own unique way of being, of living, and of resisting. But the symbiosis, or parasitism, that we have striven for and worked out with the environment does not clearly place us apart from the animal world. Many other species, in their own ways, have also solved their ecological relationships in a like manner. There are fish that care for, prune, and defend fields of algae for consumption, and jellyfish that carry in their tentacles colonies of unicellular plants that provide solar energy. For our way of life, agriculture and raising livestock were transcendental revolutions but ants and termites have cultivated for a much longer time entire plantations of fungi underground, controlling to a T the climatic seasons, temperature, humidity, and light. Even aphids have allowed themselves to be shepherded by ants in exchange for protection. And none of these farmers or ranchers claim any special consideration from natural historians. Heck, they're only bugs. But after such a long time of observation and reflection, the extraordinary human mind has processed so much first-rate information that it has managed to feel. to feel new things in new ways, things that, we must admit, no other being can quite experience. We search to understand and touch the conscience and our soul, an inner spirit that might simply be chemically based, but which managed to perceive the satisfaction found when one loves and shares, or the pain produced by death. We note that deep inside us, there's a hidden desire to discern between good and evil. And we have decided that these feelings should be passed on so that they might endure over time, or at least until the sun burns out. Treaties, theories, theorems, and age-old wisdom all that man has processed and perfected concerning the things he's observed around him have positioned him as the dominator of all he sees. This is perhaps the best reason we should respect our intuition, so unique among all living things. It urges us to protect the environment in which we live. Here, we are the dominant species. Little escapes our power and control. The weather, perhaps. But if we want to live for millions of years more and expand our civilization into the rest of the universe, we still have a lot to learn. For example, we would have to learn how to lengthen our lifespans or at least maintain our bodies in a kind of suspended animation until the right dawn comes along.
we would have to find the way to maintain control over each and every heartbeat so that not even an iota of our life force could escape. To achieve this, maybe we should look to the origin of life, maybe at bacteria, which don't die, but only divide, and probably came to this world from another. In a way, bacteria live a kind of eternal life, and although they may have been space travelers like we are now, and may accompany us on our future voyages to colonize the universe, it is undeniable that if man were nothing more than a very evolved bacteria, an animal three and a half billion years old, we would be considered, at the very least, one very strange animal. The weirdest animal of all. The greatest rara avis of all nature. Because it is true that many species speak complex, rich languages, but only we write poetry and compose music. Because it is true that animals design and use all types of tools, but no other has figured out how to use and tame fire, and by extension, treat objects with lasers. We hunt, we construct, and we move about better than any other species on this planet, where after four and a half billion years, we reign supreme, able to do the very best and the very worst. Love and violence. The human family brings together all the good things and all the bad things that life has to offer. Animals take maximum advantage of the resources in their environment, but not a one of them feels responsible for the future of the world. No other life form has ever considered the possibility of actually measuring the amount of sustenance left before there is no more. No other life form has ever calculated the time there is left to organize and preserve its heritage for tomorrow. No other life form has ever lamented the disappearance of some of its neighbors, while at the same time dooming still others to the very same abyss of destruction. With our great lack of coherence, we have conquered the entire world. We have reproduced to the maximum of our physical possibilities. We have lengthened our lives above and beyond the most optimistic quotas put forth by our ancestors. All the while, in the full knowledge that someday we must die. Our concept of time is infinite. We can dream about years on end, but precisely because we can do so, we fear not only the danger faced by other animals, but death. And we fear death differently because most people have come to believe that death is not final. belief. If there exists a difference between animal sapiens and homo sapiens, there can be little doubt that it must be looked for in a realm that transcends biology and chemistry. We can imagine eternity. We can act on a metaphysical level, perhaps even independently of our chromosomal map. Because modern genetic science still has not located the specific gene of hope.